Are you a JRPG fan? Have you spent countless hours working your way through Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts and the like? Then you'll want Astria Ascending. A small developer called Artisan Studios enlisted the powers of Njima, scenario writer of many Final Fantasies including 7, 7 Remake, 8 and 10, and Hitoshi Sakamoto, the composer of Final Fantasy XII among many other great games, and created this brand new take of a JRPG. Yes, all the usual elements are there. It's turn-based, has a job class system, elementals, stat growth, ability learning, but it's also got new aspects compared with other similar games such as hand-drawn visuals, the opportunity to swap an entire party in one turn, as well as a quality of life setup in the menu settings where you can change the difficulty in most areas and make each playthrough a different battle and character build experience. A reimagining of an iOS game called Zodiac Orkanon Odyssey, released back in 2015, Astria Ascending is a hot new take. Straight away you have access to eight main characters who are all demigods representing their race in the kingdom of Orkanon. You're immediately faced with enemies called Noises attacking your city and set out to defeat them as they spawn in different areas, later opening up with a world map and teleport spots you venture further afield across many maps and dungeons. This game comes with side quests which may help your character learn skills otherwise unobtainable, as well as a token minigame, much like the cards of many Final Fantasies, where you can ask almost any passerby if they'd play around with you. The combat system is like most turn-based systems, where you can find their weakness and exploit it, but with Astria Ascending, you also have focus points, where you can turn up the power to punish the enemy more. These focus points build up as you hit enemies with the element they're most weak to, so it's a good idea to keep an eye on their responses and make sure to use the correct ability for it. Another great battle benefit is that all characters earn experience points regardless of whether you use them or not, so grinding shouldn't be too much of a problem. One down point on the battle system is its lack of a battle bar telling you the turn order. Having no clue who's coming up next doesn't help with planning ahead as well as seeing what effect things like haste will truly have on the party. Another gripe is the map and directions. There were many points where I could bring up my current mission but it didn't exactly show me the way and I'd wander aimlessly for a while while I tried to remember places that characters have mentioned in the previous cutscene. Have you forgotten about the noises in Pesca Spring already? Looking at the menu, it's easy to navigate and all RPG fans should be used to its content. Not only do we have the standard equipment, quests and hunt sidebars, but there's also access to their ascension tree, which is where you can level up each character's stats and abilities with earned star nodes. The gameplay outside of battles is an interesting 2D side-scroller platform, where you run around as Ulan and can ignore an enemy by freezing them with an energy blast or choose a preemptive strike by slashing as you approach. Working your way through dungeons, you come across puzzles to unlock areas and helpful chests. Unlocking and using the teleport areas makes quick work of getting around, and one of the most valuable assets in the game is the ability to save anywhere. Out on all consoles from day one, including Xbox Game Pass, Astria Ascending will be released at around £35 on PC, £40 on consoles, and will take approximately 30 to 50 hours to finish, depending on how much of a completionist you are. I hope you enjoyed this review, please give us a like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on the game.